thank you. Oh. Hey, you caught me playing with McDonald's here. I'll tell you what, the next time we do a video, I'll show you how to do some, start learning how to do gun tricks. It's a lot of fun. Well, that one I was just playing with was uh, a local light can get up for about $50. Of course. Anyway, that's for another story. Uh, we're going to talk about again some more log cabin building today. You can see my little buddy here, Scooter. He's got about 600,000 miles in the tractor trailer with me. Not counting many times I drove from Maryland out here to Arizona to build my log cabin. Uh, we're picking up a lot of subscribers now and there's interest in this. And I think if we get one person maybe to kind of take notes on what I talk about, I tend to get on different subjects and ramble. But that's okay, as I'm rambling, I'm thinking of ways to save you money. Now, we talked about building the logs roughly yesterday and some tools. Let's go back into land again. Now, out in the desert, if you get away from the electricity, your land is much, can be much cheaper. That's going to change eventually because uh, I'm out here in the desert. I'm not hooked up with electricity. I, I can go on my computer within a... Uh, uh, two months I can read newspapers all around the world, the articles, publish, and communicate, which is good. But now, of course, the, uh, one way to buy land is just go to a real estate person. And don't forget, uh, when you're looking for land, um, you can always make a counter offer. But the way I got my land, I went and bought it from the uh, uh, county or the state when they had an auction. And there's a book that you should get. Uh, it's uh, it's how to buy uh, tax deeds and uh, uh, um, tax liens. Uh, it's written by a lawyer and explains what what it works in every state. And a tax lien is money that's owed to the government. And if after a certain point in time they will auction it off. If you're there at the auction, which is only about one day a year. Uh, you, you can get yourself a darn good deal. But now, uh, a lot of times, especially out here in Arizona and uh, these different counties, uh, land uh, sometimes don't even sell at the tax lien. And you go on and look at the land. Uh, sometimes it gets overlooked. It might need a road. It might have a dirt road going into there. Uh, uh, perhaps if somebody's left a bunch of trash on there. And, you know, getting rid of tires can be uh, ex expensive, but it um, will work and save you a lot of money. Now, the other thing um, on land, uh, uh, it's easy to subdivide out the west, so you might want to get your extra piece of land. Okay, so we're going to have to look for your land, uh, make sure that's what you and your wife wants. Uh, in my particular case, I can be in a uh, small town within about 10 minutes where we would have uh, Walmart, uh, um, Ace Hardware, uh, and you know, many other things, the insurance representatives. So look around for land. You can find a good deal. You can find a town that's growing. Now, I, I mentioned yesterday, don't go out and buy a bunch of expensive tools. You know, you can very easily, uh, let a salesman sell you five, six, seven thousand dollars worth of tools that you may uh, not need, or you're just going to use it once and uh, um, once or twice. So, if you can cut your tools down, for example, uh, I bought my uh, um, land uh, for five thousand dollars, seven thousand for three lots, that's three and a half acres. We're back on the east to get three and uh, three acres of ground or California, you're going to pay a hundred thousand dollars, seventy-five thousand. Well, that difference between what you can get land if you'll look for it can more give you all the money you need to build this house. But one of the things you are going to need once you get out here, uh, you're going to need a generator. So, uh, I get my generators, I'm not I'm getting paid to say this, but I go to Harbor Freight and get a lot of my tools, and I get the Predator, but when you get a generator, get the biggest one possible, 
because some days <coughs> you'll be working, you may have two or three people doing uh, uh, needing power tools, and the further you run your electrical wire from your generator, the less power it puts out. So uh, you can get a good generator from uh, Harbor Freight, and what I would do, uh, I'll put the extended warranty on there. Because building this cabin, that generator is going to be running sometimes all day long. The, uh, the next thing I would do now is uh, look around for some of your tools. You're going to need a scriber, that's definitely. And uh, we have swap meets at these places. Sometimes you can get a, I got a whole basket of hair cream clips one day for $5. You're going to need sledgehammers, uh, probably don't need any axes. But you're going to get a, a chainsaw, I would get um, the very best possible. I use the skill, and it never failed me on starting. I didn't get the very biggest because I, I, I thought it needed a stronger man to handle it. I got one next to the very biggest. But you can get the very biggest, um, and that will last you. And you may need a secondary uh, chainsaw if you got other people want to help. Some other places that you can get some help on building a cabin, look up log cabin schools. When these students come out, they can do all kinds of things. I mean, they can make uh, uh, probably 15 different types of notches. Sometimes you have to make a different type of notch. Uh, they'll be uh, good at scribing. Uh, the scribe of log is when you put the second one over the bottom one, you got a little, uh, looks like a fork with two levels on it. and you have to squirt water on the log and you go all the way around that log and it will even ride over a bump on the other bottom log and that gives you an exact measurement for cutting. It takes a little time to learn how to do it and some tricks to the trade. Uh, now when I when I skinned my logs <clears throat> I took off the least amount of bark as possible Because I like the logs, they look beautiful. Got all the bark off of them, but I didn't get down into the logs too deep. Because you can always take it off, but you can't put it back on. So I left them much uh, charm and characteristics uh, on my log as possible. You'll get a good generator. Now the other thing I would do is before I actually um, got too far into log building, I'd build a, uh, a barn, uh, a, a building where you can keep your tools in. Uh, inexpensive way to build a barn or a tool shed is uh, is a pole barn, and that's where you just got the poles that go in the ground. Uh, out here in the desert, you have to, for some reason, there's termites, so you want to make sure that you use treated wood. You can get treated wood um, green, or you can get environmental friendly treated wood where it can't do no harm to anyone. Uh, I use six by sixes. I put three of them together and bowl them together to save a few dollars. And I put them down to ground. Uh, put the cinder block in the holes before I put them under the ground. And I put each um, bar, uh, each uh, post with two rebars so it couldn't be shaken around. And I put the concrete on there. But I built as big a barn as possible. And also I look for lumber yards. I'm not talking about Lowe's or um, uh, Home Depot, go to a lumber mill and they will sell you rough cut wood at a fraction of the price that you're going to pay for it if you go to a lumber company. Don't forget when they, uh, a log, has someone has to be paid to bring it to the lumber mill, then someone has to pay the lumber mill to, to smooth it down, then it has to be transported to a distributor and supported to a store. So if you just go to the lumber mill and do it yourself, uh, you're, you're, you're cutting out about four or five middlemen. <clears throat> if you got plenty of land, you might want to look around for some sawmill tools where you can cut your own wood up and uh, plane it down. But uh, And also remember when you, uh, when you start cutting with uh, um, uh, rough cut wood, uh, a two by four is actually two inches by four inches. When you go into a, a, a furniture store, not a furniture store, but a lumber store, a 2 by 4 is actually a little less than 2 inches. 
a little less than four inches. So uh, that's a good way to save some money. I bought for a hundred dollars. This is about seven years ago. Enough of two by sixes for one hundred dollars. I couldn't get them all on a big pickup truck. So now you got your shed, uh, office, a place for um, and make it big enough. Make it as big as you can. You know, mine is twenty six by twenty six. Be a nice place to. Uh, to put your blueprints up where you can go in and get out of the cold and discuss it. <clears throat> now, also, I mentioned I think it would be good for some of you folks to take notes of this stuff when I'm rambling because I forget things. I gotta just remember one of the things you'll have to do is you go online and get a blueprints of a cabin that you want. Uh, but generally speaking, out here in Navajo County, the blueprints have to be engineered by an engineer. Is considered alternative building material. I don't know how a log cabin could be considered a log, but that's the way it is. It relieves the county uh, from uh, irresponsibilities. The other thing is uh, when you hire an engineer, if you have a dispute with uh, the building inspector, the engineer's decision outranks the building inspector. Some other things I, I wanted to mention so you can save some money on. Uh, my house here is, you know, my house is 26 feet off from the top of the roof down to the ground. One thing about it, when I was up at work and I knew if I fell off it wouldn't be habit for me. But uh, I have beams in a couple places, uh, floor joists downstairs, and I use glue beams. They're more money, like two, three, four hundred dollars, but they're engineered, they won't come apart, and once again, engineered. Uh, does away with any problems with the building inspector. I mentioned yesterday, um, um, start getting books. You need bo get books on laying concrete, uh, rebar, and electric. Now, if you're a, a professional builder, then you don't need all this. And start looking around for a log grader. The best place to look for a log grader is one, uh, if you're going to harvest the uh, lumber from a um, a forest, National Forest Service, uh, they can probably put you in touch with a log grader. And he'll go by and uh, put ribbons on the logs that you're going to need. So you're going to get your tools. I would get um, uh, draw knives. You'll see those quite often at um, swap meets. And you can spend from uh, $49 up to $250 on a draw, draw knife. Now, not all draw knives are created equal. And by the way, a person that's really skilled with it, they said they could smooth out a piece of wood where you can run your hand across it and never get a splinter. So um, uh, find your log supplying company, and they'll have a variety of logs uh, to draw from. And uh, they'll, what they'll need to know is what type of wood you're going to work with. Different types of wood is going to require a, a different type of log for best results. And don't forget, let them know that you're going to be, if you're going to be working with green wood, just been cut down. That's important. They know that. Now, a professional log builder prefers to work with green wood. I was fortunate enough that my uh, spruce wood, that's what my cabin is, had been down on the ground for seven years, so I didn't have to worry about shrinkage. But a rule of thumb is, coast to coast, border to border, when you work with green logs, they will shrink over a period of ten years, one inch for every foot. So if you want a 10 foot ceiling, you better, you got to put up uh, 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 11 foot of logs. And those logs will have to have a, a jacks in there, we'll go into that later on. Because as your logs shrink, you have to be able to let the center of your roof down. Also with log cabins, interesting thing, would you believe that your doors and your windows, I have nine windows, are not actually to your cabin. We'll go in, that's called the book. You'll find that in your books as soon as you get them. The base you build a door frame, a window frame, install the door windows, then you put it in between the logs and you run um, screws through, you put slats in there so that the logs can slide down around your doors or your windows. 
Another way that you can save money is, say you're going to build a cabin um, minus 20 by 30. Uh, let's say you want to build one a little bit bigger, and bigger better, um, 25 by uh, 40. Uh, once you decide the length and the width you want, go pick out your windows now. You can find windows on sale. Uh, maybe good windows where a guy ordered a window and it was supposed to have been, say, uh, um, I'm trying to think of a figure. Let's just say for conversation, 24 inches wide. And the uh, building, uh, uh, the people that, that designed the windows for him made a mistake and made them 28 foot. Uh, not 28 foot, but 28 inches. Well, if it's... You can get those for a fraction on the cost, and then just cut your logs out the size for your windows. Don't try to make your windows fit the logs. And remember, I mentioned to you about building yourself a nice tool shed where you can store your stuff. So as you're working at nighttime, uh, you can go out and find these different things. I think that's enough information for a while, but start thinking about tools. Also, uh, uh, We'll talk a little bit about a well. Uh, in the desert, sometimes you're going to have to go uh, three or four hundred feet below the ground, so you need a good generator to bring that uh, water out of the ground. And there's a couple of things you can do once you have a storage tank. Um, you can also use a generator for doing a lot of water, maybe irrigating your garden. But you can get solar pumps that will um, say you got a 2,500 gallon tank. Once you get halfway down, It'll, the, when the sun's out, it'll fill that tank up for you and you don't have to use your generator. I hope this is going to help you. i got to tell you, it's been a, a grand adventure. Uh, I had really not very much building experience. I built an airplane in my basement one time, but I had the help of the EAA and the aviation school to help me uh, do this. And this is the only big thing I ever had to do. But when you work with wood, it's very inviting. It smells nice, but uh, get your uh, find out people that can help you. Hardware stores, you know, there's all kinds of help everywhere. And uh, you know, in this country, if you're willing to work, there's tons of people that are willing to help you. So next time, you know, next time we'll do some gun tricks and things. I should have to get started on that. If you're going to be out west, you need to be able to impress your horse or something. So. So again, for, from Happy Trails to the West, Cowboy Ron saying so long.